Hi there. My name is Steve Fiorelli, and I'm a security SE with Barracuda Networks in Canada. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing with you how easy it is to connect multiple Barracuda CloudGen firewalls together with VPN tunnels, utilizing Barracuda's graphical drag and drop VPN editor. The drag and drop editor is delivered via the Barracuda Control Center. And a couple notes about the Barracuda Control Center. The control center provides centralized management for multiple Barracuda CloudGen firewalls, all from a single pane of glass like you can see on screen. The Barracuda CloudGen firewalls can be located anywhere around the world in multiple form factors. So whether you have physical hardware-based Barracuda CloudGen firewalls, whether they're virtual-based running inside of Hyper-V or VMware, or whether they're located in the public cloud, such as in AWS or Azure, it doesn't matter. An admin can log into the control center and have the ability to click into and manage any of those firewalls. They can make changes to the firewall. They can view live traffic and perform troubleshooting for that firewall. Again, all from this single pane of glass. Other features of the control center include a revision control system, which provides an ability to track admin firewall changes and roll back those changes if necessary zero touch deployment for an easy rollout of firewalls to new locations and centralized update management. The VPN GTI editor. Now this is what the VPN GTI editor looks like on screen. And I'm going to jump into this live demo in just a moment. But first I wanna let you know about the Barracuda proprietary VPN technology called Tina that makes this all happen. Tina offers many advantages compared to a traditional IPsec site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. Tina stands for Transport Independent Network Architecture. And a couple more details about Tina. Tina utilizes a modified initial handshake, which improves upon the denial of service protection for X509 certificate-based authentication of the tunnel. Tina also offers multiple encapsulation transport options. There's ESP, UDP, TCP, TCP and UDP in a hybrid mode or simple routing. Now these multiple transport options exist to ensure that there's the best possible performance of your VPN tunnel. So whether you have an internet connection that's really low or, or perhaps not so low latency, doesn't matter if it's a low or a high bandwidth, or even if you have an internet connection that maybe is not the most reliable. Tina was designed to get the most out of that internet connection. Tina offers heartbeat monitoring and fast failover support. So there's no downtime with Tina. When you have multiple Tina tunnels established between two sites, you could automatically fail over between those tunnels. Tina provides continuous bandwidth and throughput evaluation of your tunnels. And I should also mention that Tina is immune to NAT devices or proxies. So you could have your Barracuda CloudGen firewall sitting at the edge, or even if you have it sitting in behind a NATing device, that's not a problem at all for Tina. As an IT professional, you might have spent some time configuring IPsec tunnels in the past. And if you remember, you would have to specify the different phase one and phase two settings, making sure that they match up on both ends. And after you've got the tunnel up and running, long as one of the ISPs doesn't go down, your VPN tunnel would live. Now, this is an area where Tina really shines because Tina offers some really advanced capabilities that when combined with SD-WAN, give you a truly bulletproof type of VPN. With Tina and SD-WAN on the Barracuda CloudGen firewall, you can have multiple VPN transports that are alive in passing traffic at the same time. You can actually have up to 24 separate internet connections per firewall with VPN tunnels established over all of those internet connections. You can send traffic over those multiple VPN tunnels all at the same time so essentially you're aggregating your VPN traffic or you can utilize it as a failover. So should your primary VPN tunnel go down, not a problem. Your standby is always up and running and ready to pass traffic. 
the VPN tunnels also have the ability to have performance-based transport selection. So a VPN tunnel can be chosen that has, for, for example, the lowest latency or maybe the highest amount of bandwidth. If you have a VoIP connection, you'd probably want the lowest latency. For some traffic, maybe if you have users accessing different file shares and transferring data, you would want to have the transport with the highest amount of bandwidth that's selected. Traffic duplication is also offered. So you can have traffic that's sent over the multiple VPN tunnels at the same time. Something like this would be good for VoIP traffic, where if one internet connection goes down, you would have an instantaneous failover because the data is being sent simultaneously at the same time. On the screen here, you can see the SD-WAN dashboard, which shows multiple transports and what it looks like when you have one site connected to another site. All right, I'm done chatting. Let's get to the demo. On my screen here, I have the firewall admin tool, which is connected to a control center with multiple firewalls. The first thing that we're gonna review is drag and drop capabilities. I'm going to lock this area of the firewall. And I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to select five other sites. So already down below, I have a headquarters site. And this time I'm gonna drag my other sites. So now I have a headquarters plus sites one through five. And to establish VPN tunnels from the different sites to the headquarters, it's very simple. Simply drag from the different sites to the headquarters. And I could click on send and then activate to actually activate these VPN tunnels. And that's it, pretty cool. Now let's discard this change and show some other options. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to my settings area. And I'm gonna instantiate a hub and spoke type of VPN network. I'm gonna choose my hub as the headquarters firewall that's already shown below. I'm gonna go back to my other firewalls, sites one, two, three, four, and five. And this time when I drag them on the screen, I can see that my VPN tunnels to the headquarters are established automatically. No need to drag and drop. And this is my hub and spoke. If one of my sites, for example, site five wants to be able to communicate with site four, well, all that VPN traffic is now going to be going over the headquarters site to be able to get there. Let's discard this change and show another option. This time, instead of a hub and spoke, I'm going to choose a meshed network by default. So meshed equals yes. I'm gonna go back to my firewalls one through five. And this time when I drag all of them onto the status map, I can see that automatically a mesh is established. So this time all of my different sites are communicating directly to one another. By the way, if I wanna see the details of any one of these tunnels that I've had automatically set up, I can click on this arrow, click on the name, and this is gonna give me the details of the VPN tunnel that was established from one site to the other. So you can see here that this is an active tunnel that's going from site five to site four. And by the way, if I wanted to change that, for example, if I wanted to make this like a dual active site, I could do that here and now you can see that both sites are constantly trying to communicate with each other to establish a tunnel. I can also see the different local networks that are being passed on each side. Now you might wonder how are these local networks chosen? Well, when you're setting up a new CloudGen firewall, when you're configuring the network settings, there's actually a checkbox where you can mark that this network should be included in site-to-site -site TINA tunnels. Okay, now you can also manually specify the local networks as well. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you is some resources that you have available. And let's start with barracuda.com. So barracuda.com, if you browse to the products page and choose the CloudGen firewall, this is what you're going to see. 
And there's a lot of good information here, including this resources area. And the resources area has different data sheets on the CloudGen firewall, videos, case studies, white papers, and solution briefs. So really a good amount of resources to be able to dig into the Barracuda CloudGen firewall. The other site that I wanted to show you is the Barracuda campus. And the Barracuda campus is basically Barracuda's tech library. You can browse to campus.barracuda.com, choose the Barracuda Cloud Gen Firewall, and then you'll have access to a wide range of documentation on the Cloud Gen Firewall. You'll also have training, and there's training on the various topics, including what we reviewed today to set up VPN tunnels. Thank you for watching this live demo of configuring site-to-site -site VPN tunnels automatically with the Barracuda drag-and-drop GTI editor. Thank you.